Hey everybody, and happy new year. Welcome to Paint by Painting. Painters Motivating Painters Review. We've got it out there in the end. Uh, if you're just wondering if this video off YouTube, wondering what it's about, uh, we're a Facebook group with a lot of great people on there uh, who are trying to help each other out uh, progressing as painters in miniature painting. And as part of that, um, every month we do a review where people post their finished work, some of their best stuff, or put some stuff they were working on, and look for feedback uh, in terms of what they could do to make progress in their future hobby project. Uh, so this is the review for December, end of December 2023, uh, and we're going to launch straight into it with uh, this fork figure from Mark Weller. So Jim, do you want to get us started there? Or Adam uh, Weller, sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Looks really good. But next time, um, Adam, just a, just a point, just to... Just a quick note, don't post it in comments here. Actually do a proper, we almost missed this. We only saw it like just now as we're starting to record. So this has been sat here for four weeks, apparently. We haven't seen it. So put an actual post up next time. So we're guaranteed to see it. Um, but this looks really good, man. Really, really nice. Um, very smooth. You've got great contrast. I love the um, uh, the shading color that you've used, the purple, like in the skin. That's really good. And you've avoided like the islanding in the skin. So you brought it up um, really nicely and reserved the deep shadows for where they need to be. Um, so the skin looks great. I did think you could get some flesh tones uh, into it, like around the nipples, uh, the knuckles, certainly the nose and the ears. Orcs look really... I'm painting some orcs at the minute for the first time, actually. And um, they just look so much more lifelike, more real, if you incorporate some skin tones into these fleshy areas where the skin would be quite thin and the sort of the red blood would show through the skin. Um, so that's a neat trick. Um, uh, I really liked what you did with the metals, like on the rings, it's good tone to them. Um, I would just try and, I wasn't sure what this material was on this gauntlet on his hand. It's very, very close to the wood. So if that is metal as well, push it more into the tones that you've used on like the belt sash and these, um, well, not earrings, but, you know, these these hoops that are hanging from his hair, just to differentiate it from the wood. So you could um, darken the wood or put some um, put some subtle, like, desaturated grey-greens in there um, to separate it, or just bring the... If this is metal, then just bring the highlights up so it's more in line with these hoops. That would be cool. Um, but it's very, very clean and very smooth. The edge highlighting is bang on point, and the texture in the cloth as well is really good. Um, and then the last note I had really was... Um, the bone looks really plasticky and smooth so try and work some like interference colors in there uh greens grays browns um just to give it a, and like put some texture into it because like bone's not completely smooth it's quite pitted so try and just put some micro texture in just to um just to give it a little bit more interest it looks plastic at the minute and uh, although the colors are right you could just go further just to differentiate the texture um, but other than that, yeah, really, really nice piece. So um, well done, dude. Very nice. Matt? Yeah, great piece of work. Uh, I'm glad we actually noticed it there. Uh, really, really nice, strong contrast and everything. Like even little stuff like that belt around its middle where there's a really strong light glitting off it. It's really nice. And being able to, and I love to have that kind of steel, dark blue steel, and it's kind of similar to the hair. And overall, it's very harmonious. But that is probably why, as Jim was saying, it's kind of hard to differentiate certain areas because it's like a lot of, you know, uh, kind of brains and yellow brains, that kind of thing. Uh, it'd be nice to see some more angles as well because like that, the, the skull, like it's really well painted, but they can't see it from every angle. So if, like what we can see here, it looks a little bit like just less interesting than the, the figure itself, which is fair enough because like this guy has so much going on. So I know with busts, it can be really hard to get in. Like, oh, I'm going to do the feathers really well skin really well because on a bus like obviously it's a big canvas you want to do everything as well as you can uh and you've done a really really great job i'd say on like all the materials really here um one thing you might look into is like you don't so the eyes are obviously not painted like to stand out so like they're closed really small or whatever and that's fine but it might be nice to have like a glinty like a maximum highlight reflection on like the teeth or like the bulb of the nose or somewhere around there just to give it like a central focus because it doesn't have eyes and we want to kind of look there. And I think the teeth, again, they don't run quite the way up to the same uh, maximum highlight as the uh, as the skin does, but like obviously they would have the same max highlight because they're kind of wet and like glistening and that. Uh, but that's really minor. It's a great looking piece. I love the use of color and the use of light on this. It's like pretty great. Thanks a million for submitting. Hope to see more from you in the future. And we're going to move up to our next post, which is. 
Oh, Alexis Bonaire with another amazing orc. Uh, <laughs> best work so far, as always. Yeah, it's looking great. This is a, a really, really fantastic piece. Like, I really like seeing it when you post kind of like some work in progress pictures of it. Uh, the orc skin, like the yellow in the skin, it's so good. It's such a nice take on it. It's got such richness of like light of value and of, of hue as well. And like, it's such a big piece. And then you, at the end, you have that close up of the face and you're like, the face is so detailed for what is like, you know, really small when you like, you have to actually zoom in to look at it. Uh, and you've got like everything picked out. Wonderful, like pieces of, of like little bits of different colors in like the metals and everything. Uh, I've always really enjoyed your use of like, kind of interference color like that. I think it's a really strong piece for that reason. Obviously, the biggest piece of this is the bird. The bird is, is awesome. Uh, like, the eyes are so, like, look like they're, like, glossy beads uh, and everything. Uh, it looks, like, stupendous. I think I really like the way you did the two lights, where you have, like, one, like, yellowish light coming from the front, blue, bouncy light off, like, the water beside it. Um, I thought that the way it wraps around on the shadow side, it's called the shadow side, it's a bit too abrupt, the way it goes from like that orange brown to like blue on the wing. I believe it like on the body, because if you're saying the feathers in the body are white, then any blue light bouncing onto them is gonna make them very blue straight away. But like, if you have something that's orange brown, it's already a very warm color. So shining a blue light on it will just make it turn blue. And especially like, really suddenly like you've got like a like a straight line along the wing and it just goes from kind of that orange to blue so it might be nice to have like a broader shadow area which is like blend in more of the of the brown around the edge and then we can the plumage on the underside of the wing is probably cream or whatever so that can be quite blue as well um you could also have like warm light on that side as well like a bit because when you think about it when water hit, when sun hits the water some of it that bounces off is still quite warm. Like the, the actual physical reflections, like you could even have like ripply reflections if you wanted. But given that the light's coming from the other direction, it makes sense that he'd be in shadow on this side, um, but like probably just not that sudden a shadow because he's still like on a well-lit day outside, if that makes sense. And then the only other note I had, and it's kind of more to do with sculpt to be honest with you than anything else, is that just on the staff, uh, from like a distance view, it's kind of a little bit hard to differentiate the ring bit and then the skulls. I think there's like a, you have like a bright bit of the skulls and then a bright bit of the, the ringy hoop thing that are kind of adjacent to each other, but it's very busy around there and it might just depend on the angle that we're looking at as well. But just like in the, in the very first view, it's hard to tell that the, the skull, like what exactly is going on up there. But like, like that, that's like more to do with the skull and the fact that we're looking at photos of it uh, than anything else. Uh, I think this is is definitely up there for your best work so far, Alexis. Like, it's it's absolutely stunning, um, and I love the way you've got like the dark plumage. Like the bird is so realistic; it's great. Like we have like the dark plumage on the top, and then it's picked out in white. Like, yeah, really, really good work. Um, hopefully, we've said something, or I've said something, hopefully helpful to you in the future. Uh, but thanks for submitting, and I'll pass you over to Jim. Yeah, it's great. Really, really lovely. Um, <clears throat> good use of light. Uh, the attention's in the right place. Um, having this bright highlight on the skin, on the arm, um, and the face at the same time uh, is pretty strong because it's bringing the attention up here and using red on the headdress as well. I did think it'd be cool to get a, a bit of red in the actual feathers of the headdress as well. Um, maybe, but... Um, yeah, perhaps not. Um, as for the uh, the lighting situation on the sort of darker side, I think it's I think it's nice and it's cool up to maybe halfway up the body. I think the rest of the way up the wing, um, I don't think it sells as well. It's like the adage when you sort of say, you know, you highlight everything, you've highlighted nothing. I think this effect would sell a bit better as like a, a bounce light off the water. If it wasn't so strong going up the wing, it's like a uniform strength like at the bottom of the bird to the, the top of the wing. So I think you could dial it back like down this wing and have that more because this one's actually closer to the water, like the opposite wing. But there's none of that. Well, what I can see anyway, there's none of that kind of blue light painted in here. Forgive me if it is, but it doesn't it doesn't look like it from here. Um, so yeah, I just think maybe just dialing that back up this whole wing would be cool. And then it, it really emphasized the fact that it is a secondary bounce light. Um, 
and that'd be cool. But again, this is being really fussy because this is a great paint job. Um, and then again, not really necessarily your fault, but there's, there's feathers like on the body of the bird are quite soft. So I think you should push some shadow tones around into the feathers just to sort of define the structure of them a bit better. Um, but like the attention that you put into like the face of the bird and his face and his feathers is just so, so lovely. Um, it's a stunning piece. It really is great stuff. And your water effects are really selling as well. That's great um tones in the rock all awesome um i think there was maybe you could have a touch more like saturated green to show like um algae growing on that stone because it's obviously been there forever so oh excuse me i'm getting messages um so yeah uh, other than that uh stunning so uh yeah really nice work thank you alexis i hope you find that a bit helpful please come again um Lars Mortensen next so um he's had problems with damage and bubbles in the cast uh so leaning into it with evil skin disease and chaos -y type vibes um any general critique so I think you did an awesome job of leaning into it um I think I managed to pick out a few like cracks and dips um, and like painting in these scars and these like varicose veins and stuff and like the purpley tone to it is just genius it's a great way of doing it um i've had some troubles with resin casts as well lately and i've i've leaned into it um so it can be done and i really like what you've you've done with this it's so so cool um the only hold up i would have with it i guess is that the purple that's in the skin is very very close to like the saturated purple in his tunic so i i kind of think if you had a complementary color for this purple bit on the tunic that that would probably like help separate it a little bit or try and work some more reds into the skin there is some obviously there but like you could ready up his knees and his knuckles and like certainly in like the, the cheekbones and like around the nose and that get some reds in there just to a give it a bit more life and b try and move this purple around a little bit because it is a bit strong overall and it's making the whole thing seems like quite washed out and it's not because you've got really great soft contrast in the whole thing um good work on the wood grain as well um that's really nice on the barrel and the um uh the weapon whatever that is tree stump or something um so if you were into it then if you were need to try and fix um like resin casting issues get liquid green stuff um it's really really good for that it does shrink a bit when it dries so you have to layer it up and do it before you prime as well um then I thought, like, all round, you could um, use some deeper shadows, just, like, pretty much everywhere. So just push, like, a, a darker tone around, so get a little bit of black mixed in with that purple to get get it going a little bit deeper. Um, because, yeah, you, your hue contrast is really, really good, but I don't think that the volumetric is as good as the hue. So um, it could also be that the photo is quite overexposed. You're on a black background here and it's quite bright. So um, try bringing your exposure down when you take pictures. That might show it off a little bit better. Um, but yeah, great work on the freehand as well. That's all really nice design. Like that eye even like looks wet, even though I'm pretty sure it's not. Like you've painted that glint in there and that looks absolutely awesome. So um, I'm I'm guessing it's going to be based properly at some point somehow. So we'll comment further on that. Um, but yeah, get that thing based as quick as possible. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's all I got. I think yeah, awesome stuff. Nice one, Matt. Yeah, it's a great looking giant. I love the kind of classic vibes and like, I mean, the amount of freehand on it. You don't even notice at first, and then you're like, oh, every single patch of clothing is like a banner of some knight, and they're all like super well painted and interesting patterns and like. They're, they're absolutely great. I would say it's really a treat to kind of look around them. Uh, because I know, like, obviously people do that raggedy claw thing for the giants because it's meant to be patched together, but every single bit is like its own heraldry uh, and super well painted all the freehands on it. The skin, yeah, I think you did a great job, as Jim said, getting that evil, evil, corrupted look. It really reminds me of in the Evil Dead film, when it gets like stabbed in the hand with a pencil and it gets like infected and it like works up all these black veins, like in in stop motion or whatever it looks great um and that's what your thing reminds you of the one thing i would say is the face looks the face is like the least interesting bit of the whole thing which i mean you're kind of like okay when you put him in this like really bright regalia that's kind of going to happen uh but it would be nice if you had like a little bit more saturated color like especially his beard like it's kind of grayed out towards the end end um 
so it's very desaturated. The skin is very desaturated up there, which obviously like it'd be nice to have a bit more focus up to, in the face. Um, or it would be really nice to see you do a bunch of banners on like where like that can be the main thing as well, like having a knight in all the tower rooms would be cool as well. But um, yeah, I think in terms of like trying to rescue a a, a problematic cast, this is like stupendous work, and like I just really love all the freehand work on there, and it's like super top notch. So thanks a million for submitting Mars. I uh, look forward to seeing more in the future. And then we're going up to Powell Rasinski, uh, doing this Athena boss, uh, based on the uh, Arnold, Arnold Lazaro, and some help from Natalie Orax. It's pretty great. Yeah, I immediately read, when I saw this, I was like, oh, that reminds me of the, the Arnold Lazaro version of it. Um, he's got a really nice use of like, really like that smooth pinky skin tone that he tends to like. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, you definitely got your own touch on it. Like you've tried to change the expression and it's really obvious. She looks much more like kind of like concerned and disgusted than the box art does. And I thought that was really nice. She looks kind of like jaded or whatever. Um, and then the freehand, like, dear Lord, like as I, as I scrolled around, I was like, yeah, no, this is already great work. And then I like, I saw the thing. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. And then it took me a second to be like, wait, you painted all of that? Like, it's like amazing. Like the whole like Artemis is owl thing. And then it's got the volumetric lighting at the NMM. And then it's like, yeah, like it's super great. And if I was wanted to be real finicky about it, no, I'm not even going to be real finicky about it. It's just super great looking. Um, I have no notes on that shield. Uh, <laughs> the, I think the helm... The gold or bra bronze or whatever um, on the on the helm doesn't look quite as good. Uh, I think you're it's kind of a complicated shape the way it's got that it's got that trim around it, uh, and I think you could probably call out more like the like the like so there's like panels of metal that are added all around the edges, and you have a dark line going around those that kind of interrupts the overall light of it, uh, and then like maybe like a like the stream highlight like on the bulby bit of the head because it's like a dome there. And then running down a bit from there. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I think that could be a little bit better. And then the kind of the armor on the chest, it's very nice looking, but it's not as kind of realistic as the as the shield in that it's very it's very bright and it sells as kind of metal in a like an illustrative way, if that makes sense. Um, but it doesn't have like you know there's going to be reflections that are different to the right and to the left, whereas it's very like kind of top down and. Um, so it still looks good and it still looks like, you know, gold, bronze or whatever, but it just isn't as good as like the face, like that, that, that like demon face or whatever that's in between, like there's a much more richness to it um, and like much more range of like kind of value and everything going across it. And um, so, yeah, but, um, and then the spear looks pretty much spot on. You could, yeah, I mean the half of the spear half the socket bit genuinely looks like it's actually metal when you look at it and the the head is a little bit more kind of painterly but i like the way you've got that reflected light uh or reflected red and the head plume on it and um, and then the, the claw has a nice richness to it i love the way you, on the back of the plume you've got this kind of blue or cold light coming in from behind it might be nice to see a little bit more of that down on like the lower parts of the fabric kind of going more into just shadow it doesn't have that kind of rim lighty thing that's going on in other parts but again this is a big bus it's all very complicated and you have to kind of prioritize where you're going but like she looks amazing like the way you've done like the highlight on the hand there and the skin and all the tendons are pulled out it's really really high-end stuff and um, so yeah sorry for not giving you more notes but uh <laughs> you've got to paint something this good it's going to be hard to pick anything out to, to improve on jim yeah, it's stunning, isn't it? Um, really, really nice. Uh, I love the style of like the skin you've got. It's really, really lively. Um, and this this painting a forced expression in as well. It's great. It's giving her like this mean. Yeah, you know, she's disgusted at something that's coming out of sort of thing. Um, it's a really great use. Really great use of color all around. Um, I thought that the gold was like really good in terms of reflections, like in the helm. That's really, really nice. They've got like secondary, tertiary reflections. Um, it's it's good as well in the shield. Very, very, very good. I just thought if I was going to pick one thing, it would be to have more of the extreme highlight just dotted around in places because you've got this like nice bright section shum, that comes down here, but 
th there would be other catches as well, like on these damages that would be brighter, like on this one here. Some of these, like um, like the inlay that's gone around the edge, they need to have high the highlights like as bright as this, and some segments as well, like on the bird. But like it's really stunning piece of freehand, and they've got like the brushed metal effect for the darker section. That looks really, really, really good. So, um, yeah, not too much criticism on the shield, really, and on the back of it as well. That's awesome. Um, it can't. The gold looks a bit like too yellow sometimes, if that makes sense. So, um, it's obviously a very, very rich gold, but it's kind of a bit cold in places as well. So it's kind of uh, a little bit difficult to read. I get that it's like a, a cold bounce, like off the off the black hair, but it's kind of got a green tinge to it. So. Um, I think if you knock the yellow back a little bit next time, I'm not suggesting you do it on this, but like for me, it's just a little bit too saturated, like, you know, Goldilocks yellow. Um, have more like a peanut-y or an ochre or like somewhere in the like Bala Brown or Zamizi um, desert kind of tone. You know, not all the way, but just, yeah, I just think the gold's just a little bit rich personally. But it's still really, really good. It definitely sells um, as gold. So, yeah, really nice. Um, then the only other thing really I had, oh, great textures uh, as well as in the leather and the and the fabrics and that. So the red in her nose I thought was maybe a little bit strong um, for two reasons. Uh, one, oh, where's a good one? Here we go. One, it sort of makes her look like she's been out in the cold. And, you know, her, the, the blood's rushing to the nose to stop it from freezing. Um, but that doesn't fit the outfit that she's wearing. Um, and it also makes her kind of look a little bit vulnerable as well when people have got a, like, a, quite a red nose. Uh, and obviously she's not because she's a badass warrior dressed in armour with a big ass spear who's not grinning at you. So, yeah, I'd maybe dial back the red a little bit for those couple of reasons. Um, I thought the spear looked ace. Brilliant reflection, interference colour on the red as well. So, uh, yeah. Awesome stuff. Thank you very much, pal. Okay, moving on to, uh, I'm going to pronounce it Sipra or Kepa, uh, who's done Helbrecht, and it's amazing. Very, 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 very good. And almost impossible to find fault with this, really. Um, because if I painted something like this, I would be putting it in Golden Demon, to be honest with you, and I'd be pretty bloody hopeful by doing it as well it is a masterpiece it's so so good like the separation the smoothness the reflections like even on the servitors like the level of detail that you've done I, I remember seeing i think it was this one you painted first um i remember seeing like the the whip of that and being like oh my god this is going to be epic uh so yeah keeping up this standard across the whole piece is difficult and you've pretty much nailed it with this buddy it looks absolutely stunning um, so I did have a couple of things, but they are so nitpicky, um, because I can't gush enough over this, to be honest, like it's amazing. So the first thing that jumped out was the settling of the base or lack of it. So you've got these gaps, like where it's actually on the physical base. I don't know if this, you've just plonked it on there to take a picture and this is going to be part of, you know, like a bigger diorama or something. I don't know, but if it is going to be on, you know, a black round base, you've got to settle it down onto there better so that's the first thing um second thing uh drill the gun barrels because that's painted it's painted exquisitely beautifully nicely but it will never look as good as being drilled so drill the barrel um then not particularly your fault but the the sculpts of the cape are like really bad on this, I find they're so sharp and it kind of looks more like Games Workshop rock than it does cape. And it's not like the cape is folding around anything that's underneath it that's forcing it into that shape. So, I mean, I've not painted this guy, so I don't know if it's possible, but I'd try and smooth out some of this angularness that's happening in this, this cape around here because it, it just doesn't look like a cape would, you know, in, in this situation, these would be a lot smoother. Um, so there's that. Um, I think you're well competent enough to do some sort of freehand, even if it's just like a little inlay or some sort of little design uh, on the black, just to break it up a bit, because it is a big amount of black. It's not doing much, although it is highlighted beautifully, like perfectly, in fact, for the cape. It is still an empty space at the end of the day. So again, hypercritical. 
kind of a minor thing, but yeah, perhaps an opportunity for next time. Try and sell like a particular material to it as well, because it doesn't have any sort of micro texture in it or light behaving in a certain way. It's just very generic highlighting. So maybe like this is how picky you've got to be to push this up a lot because it is just otherwise so completely fantastic. Um, and then in the face, I thought you could definitely do with a little bit more um, red. So you you jump to your like deeper shadows quite abruptly. So I think if you had some like red in the cheeks and around the nose and a little bit around the eyes a little bit, um, that would help to soften those transitions. And then finally, life light in the pupils, just tiny little bink bunk speck of white on. I'd probably go on the left side as we're looking at it here, just kind of you know same angle as where it's coming in from the armor, um, just to give it life because the eyes do look a little bit dead, and it's simply because there's a white dot missing from the pupils in the top left corner. Uh, that's it. Other than that, um, I can't compliment you enough on the rest of it. It is just an absolute work of art, and I think you should enter it into competitions. Oh yeah, and this OSL from this lantern is absolutely pucker, amazing. Awesome stuff. So uh, over to you, Matt. Hopefully you can be a bit more helpful than me just gushing over this thing. Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, very, very hard to find any fault with this. Like, I personally, like, it's very much in that, and as Jim said, like, totally put it into Golden Demon. It's very much in that heavy metal plus style. You've got, like, the kind of stylistic edge highlighting and stuff, but you have the NMM actually done in there. And, like, the, just even, like, that little detail of, like, the the way the, the OSL actually has little dots that to mimic the brazier and the, and trying to get that copper NMM, but it's also got a warm light on it. And you're like, it sells like perfectly. So like really great work on there. Uh, and then like zooming in on the back, it, like there's like little tiny writing on all of the like ribbons and stuff. So it's super high end work, but yeah, it needs to be on a different base. Like needs to have, like it can't be on this just flat black base. Uh, so like, I assume this is only a work in progress base because that is like in no way in keeping with the rest of the, the piece, you know, needs to have just like even just on that base and then bring the terrain out to the side and then put a little bit more time into the, like the coloration of it. Cause it's a bit like, you know, gray and brown. You could have just like a little bit more variation down in the base, not a huge amount. So again, that's like the whole games workshop thing of like not caring so much about the base, but like, you know, it, it needs to be at least just, carried on to the edge of where the uh, black base ends and um, then in terms of painting uh i thought that the like the copper or brass or whatever like metal finish is amazing uh i thought that the iron halo thing uh doesn't have quite as much contrast doesn't have quite as much like maximum highlight as some other places like in the leg um so I don't know if that's a deliberate choice to try and like draw more attention to the face, but I think in the rear view, you could definitely like have a bit more on there. Uh, and then also the backpack could maybe have like, so it has a secondary light on it, but it could have like some rim light around the edges because like a disc tends to like pick up all sorts of lights, if that makes sense. Like if you look at a reference for like a symbol, like a drum symbol, it'll have like a main light and a bed light, but it all often has like four uh, different lights on it. Uh, just because that's the kind of shape that it has, uh, but that's like super minor. Like who really cares about that? And if we want, if we want the most nitpickiest of nitpicks here, because like literally I was looking at it going like, oh my god, those power cables have like that perfect in striping, and then they're highlighted on top. But he has like that little tiny shield below his backpack, and it has like a plus in it, like it's the flag of England. Is that what the flag of England looks like, Jim? Yes, it is. Yes, it's plus. St George's Cross. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Uh, and it's just very slightly asymmetrical, or it looks very slightly asymmetrical in the photos. Like, but like that's like the the, the smallest thing we've ever said. Oh, that's really, uh, really maybe. Harsh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, you know, when you're gonna paint like you know actual light cast onto something, uh... also the reds are really nice. And... But um, yeah, I don't know if you want to like increase the the brightness in the handle of the sword. Uh, just because it's a little bit less than other places, or again, that might be a deliberate choice, uh, but it is a little bit less like uh, saturated and less bright than like the other ready ribbity bits. It stood out like a tiny bit, but like realistically, like I mean, to be honest, like the servitors are nearly stealing the show on this thing, but like I think with Hellbrecht, that's what everyone likes. No one cares about Hellbrecht, everyone likes that dude who's polishing his sword. 
I like and the guy with the melter in the back that has the NMF gun barrel, like that looks awesome as well. So yeah, super high end stuff. Put it on a like extend that face out, put it into a golden demon until you get on, if that's a thing that you want to do. And if not, put it on yourself and be like real happy with yourself. Uh, thanks a million for submitting. Uh, I hope that was of use to you. Uh, gonna move up. James Nelson with this dragon dragon person. Uh, it's a first note that Jim is definitely gonna say if I don't say is. Um Take your photos before you put it in a glass case because, like, we can literally see reflections of your hands in the photos, like, over the model, and it makes it really hard to review it. But, uh, and then you have the same problem where, like, you use the flash, but then the flash is too bright. And then I think the best one is when we're standing back at a kind of an angle, but then we're not getting all the views. It's really annoying trying to take photos up in glass cases at a museum or whatever. Realize that. But, uh, yeah, just, just take the photos outside of the glass case. Um, Oh, I skipped the page, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I like the colors that you used. It's kind of got that like blue dragon kind of feel to it. Uh, I like that the axe is an interesting choice that it's like this kind of like blue green color as well. I think it's a little bit too blue. I think, well, what I mean is that it could have more like a uh, very light blue or blue gray in it to give it a more uh, metallic kind of finish, like even just some scratchy dry brushing up along the edge of the blade, something like that, uh, just to kind of tell us what material it is as well. Like, is it like, or that it's sharp and hard, if that makes sense, because it's just a bit like amorphous at the moment. Um, then the horns, they're nicely kind of like shaded down, but I think you could go back with your base color and or a lighter color and just pick out some of the ridges around the face because it makes a really nice like frame, like halo to it. And you could do it on the nose and teeth as well. Um, and then the base, I like the way, like, I like the composition of the base. It's kind of cool that it's, like, orange tufts and, like, brown earth and stuff. But it's very artificial looking, like, because you're, like, where where is he standing where there's this hill that's, like, exactly the same size as he is? Does that make sense? And there's tufts, like, dotted around it perfectly symmetrically. So, uh, yeah, if you're doing, like, scenery, uh, it's good to just, like, try and make it as random as possible. But you have to kind of think about the way the, the figure fits into it as well. But like having this like Teletubby land style dome up to him makes it look like immediately a little bit off. Um, because like you don't get like a hill like that in nature and you don't get tufts like perfectly sparse about it. Uh, I'd recommend checking out Proverian has a video. He does like that Ogroid Myrmidon. He spends like an hour figuring out where he's going to put like chunks of rock on the base, the best frame figure. And it's like the best video I've seen in terms of like getting a base that looks natural, but also looks like complements the figure really, really well. So I uh, checked that out. Um, and yeah, but like, it looks really nice. And you did a good job getting the like, the display case and everything and it fits perfectly. I don't know if you bought that or put it together or whatever, but it, it'll look really good on your shelf and not collect a load of dust, which is uh, a, the, the bane of the miniature hobbyist. Dusting everything is the worst. Um, Jim, do you want to add anything on there? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, so besides what Matt already said, which I completely agree with, um, I think you could go a little further to, well, firstly, um, I think matte it down because it looks quite glossy in places and you're getting reflections in shadows, um, which is, which is never a good thing. So, uh, invest in some, um, ultra matte varnish, that would be a good start. Um, and then just like separating things a little bit more cleanly, like you've got good use of color and like um you know different tones in the blue and that's all really nice and in the browns um from what we can see um but just separating them out a little bit better i think would help um i completely agree with matt the 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 tufts did go on like quite uniformly so next time try and um break them up it's just a, a human mind thing vince says a lot in his videos where your brain has just done a thing it looks for patterns it will make patterns it's very difficult to do something completely randomly so you'd have to like put it on a lazy susan turntable thing and just randomly just start putting that as it's turning around just start smashing them on there as randomly as possible um but yeah other than that cool nice display case as matt said um so yeah thanks very much james Okay, moving up to uh, Daniel back again after the competition win last month. So um, this is a model from Kingdom Death, Astri the Promised. 
Um, so trying to put her in a dark, cold atmosphere with only the face and red crystals warm to increase the warm, cold contrast, which is cool. Um, change the hair from cyan to purple, or so the shade of the face is too. Would love to hear overall critique. So, um, yeah, beautiful. Once again, um, the first thing that jumps out is like the, um, the highly polished steel breastplate um, with like the sky earth horizon. Um, you've sold that absolutely beautifully. So that looks really, really good. Like the metals on the sword are really selling as well. That's great. Um, just got to pull my notes up. Sorry. Um, yeah, that's all, all glorious, really. Um, the gem, like the OSL from it is not selling a hundred percent for me. This is quite harsh because it's very nicely painted. Um, I don't think it's needed like on the belt clasp up here because there's, there's a ridge like from here. So the light wouldn't actually be able to get up to here. The only way it's going to get there is by bouncing off the sword. And if it bounced off the sword, it wouldn't be anywhere near as this intense because it's that intensity like on the blade. So I think the OSL like, on the blade is is about right, but you still need to brighten up the gem a bit. So if you're not going to brighten up the gem, you've got to tone down this reflection here. Um, this thigh, um, the tone is too orange, much too orange. That would have to be like a very, very soft version of this red that's on the sword. And it would have to be a lot subtler than this as well, because it's not appearing in this belt like the uh, the little tip on the end of the belt, which is obviously highly reflective steel and it's not reflecting anything. I think there's a bit, you've shown a bit on the leather as well, but look how weak it is here. And then over here, all of a sudden, it's really, really strong. So I'd just, and then the same on this leg as well, the, the way it drops off is really, really abrupt. So I think basically to, to sum up the OSL, I'd tone it down hugely uh, remove this effect, remove this effect, soften this blend down here and tone down the one in the sword. And I think you'll be about there. So um, it's very, very tricky, hard to do. It's an odd shaped thing and you're trying out reflections on different materials. Um, so yeah, have a go at that and see how you get on. But it, it is a tricky, tricky shape to do. Um, um, the cloak was a terrible sculpt, I thought. Let's have a look at it. It's just so drab and horrible. Uh, not your fault at all, but there's just it's just such a bad sculpt of, of fur. It looks like somewhere between like fur and leaves. And it'd be really hard to do anything with it. So I think the only thing you can pretty much do is just push the shadows up to like force the like the the structure of these um whatever they are let's call them furs they could be feathers or leaves i don't know um so for some shadows upwards so probably best just like turn turn the model upside down and let gravity do the work for you um because obviously you're pushing glaze and stuff in there they're just going to run back down again so turn it over and get some get some structure forced into there um but yeah other than that really really harshness i think that the purple hair is the right choice as well uh, over this cyan you did a great job on the face um like it's really really lively very very soft feminine skin um the eyes are beautifully structured beautiful highlight across like the t section of it um that's all really really nice um and the reflectivity and like this is selling as like a black leather like in the pants with like this cold uh bounce light off the floor which is stunning i wasn't sure if he freehanded that on if he did that's ridiculous or whether that's sculpted i'm not sure but like this flower of life star of david i think possibly called something else as well but like this design is awesome how you got the warm uh light from this side cold light from this side that's all and like the shadow section in the middle it's all beautiful it's all really really nicely done so um yeah stunning work on pretty much everything um just really dial back on that osl man um yeah lovely stuff thank you very much for showing us this beautiful piece again matt yeah super super great work as usual um really love the leather pants like they totally sell and like like as jim said it's kind of weird the belt doesn't have the belt should have more osl because it's closer to the thing but the pants are reading is shinier so you kind of it works it looks like like fantasy art as well you get like the lady in the black pants that are incredibly glossy and she has lights on her from different directions so yeah it works really nicely uh the cyan hair or the pink hair definitely a better choice they both read kind of like 
white, which is good. Like she reminds me of your one from The Witcher. Is it not is her name Cersei? No, Siri. Game of Thrones. Siri. Siri. Siri I, I was gonna say Sandra. Yeah. So like it looks like white hair that has a tint of purple to it or pink, which is nice. Um. But yeah, and like Jim said on the OSL, I'm gonna give a counterpoint. Which is, I think, for me, the main issue is that the OSL, the reflection, is like almost the exact same tone as the light source. Like if you look at like the the, the thing on her belt and the, the reflected light, they're like almost exactly the same. And then on her earring and on her cheek, they're almost the exact same as well. And that would kind of make sense if it's like a neon light, because they have that thing where like it's a red light and it looks red, and the light that comes through it is red. But if it's meant to be like a candle or a torch or whatever, it's going to be much more like orangey yellow in the center. And that'll give us much more of a feeling that it's like that it's emanating from here and dying off and their reflections rather than, yeah, at the moment it looks like it just kind of fools your eye and that you're like, the reflections look good, but then you look at the actual light source and you're like, why is it not any brighter or more um, uh, warmer, I suppose, than the actual. Uh, cast light um and then as well on her thigh where the the lantern i'm gonna call it a lantern is like on her thigh i think you should do a little bit of shadow in there somewhere like so that it goes like there's like dark before the osl starts because the lantern has like solid bits of it so and then that would just also help sell the idea that it's like it's shadow and then they have a reflection coming out of it but uh yeah it's really great work a uh, really minor nitpick here is that I thought, like, from a distance, like, the cut on her face is also quite red and looks kind of fresh, or like it is a glow, if that makes sense. Above her eye, it looks like you painted in, like, healed skin, but below her eye, it's still kind of red. I don't know. I think it works either way, but uh, that's just something that I noted, because uh, I was going, like, oh, is her eye glowing? Oh, so then I zoomed in, and I was like, no, it's a cut, but it's just a little bit more red and intense below. and. Then but I really like the way you have like the fresh skin growing in above. So you could change that. The faces that are screaming on her like scarf thing and fading away into nothing are like amazing. There's such a minor thing, but like it's like skin that becomes translucent that becomes nothing. It's a really lovely effect. Uh, and then other thing, I wasn't a hundred percent sure with the sword what it's meant to be made of. Like I'm thinking it looks kind of like it's crystal to me more than like metal. Um, I think maybe some of the reflections on it, if it's metal, the reflections are a bit too um, symmetrical, where they're like, bam, 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 bam. If it's crystal, I think like you can probably paint it whatever you want, but that's like a tricky thing to do as well. If you want some inspiration, someone did the Flower Knight from Kingdom Death, who has like an ivy wrapped around his sword. They did that as crystal. You can see the thing behind it. It's amazing. Uh, I'm sure if you look up Flower Knight Kingdom Death, you'll probably find it somewhere. Um, and then the last thing was, yeah, like, so there's a very, you were saying that you wanted it to be, like, all cold apart from the glow from her, from her crystals and stuff, but, like, you have a very yellow light coming in from behind her, which is, again, is on the, I like it, I like the way on the bottom of the sword you get this, like, orange light, like, as if it's coming from somewhere else, but that just seems kind of, like, relatively weak, or it was a bit confusing in that I was, like, is her cloak yellow, and the sword is, like, gold, and that's just white light coming in, so, like, I would, like, um, wrap ramp that up a bit or fade it back down to be like the front view is it's cold and then red glow. Um but they're all like super minor things. This is like immensely well painted. It looks adorable. Uh and uh yeah I think you should be really happy with it. Look forward to seeing I'm sure you're gonna come back and touch it because you're a serious, serious painter. And congratulations on your, your recent well earned win in a, the AK interactive competition. Uh look forward to seeing more from you in the future. Anyway. Okay, moving on up, we've got uh, some sort of dwarf bust. It's a very fun little piece by William Thompson. Um, I'm going to call it done. I think the hood needs work. Um, not sure what. Uh, okay, so just looking at it initially, uh, some things that I liked about it. I, I like the warmth, like the redness in the nose, um, and the kind of very, very pale skin tone kind of works for me as a dwarf. Um, uh, and the kind of watery eyes as well, they're kind of like washed out. It's like an interesting like kind of take on it. But I think you've got a lot of like bleed over from certain areas, like just bits of the hood, like the edges of the hood with this like skin tone on them. 
Uh, and then the underneath of the hood, it needs more shadow. That's one of the things. Like everywhere, like where the hood is like flopped over the top, it needs to go basically to black in under there. Because like, I don't know if I had a hood to pull up, like that's what's going to happen in under there. Like there's just no way of light to get in uh, there. And also you got you got 1970s Captain America syndrome on his ears, which is that his ears look like they're on the outside of his hood. Like he's wearing a hood that has ears on it because you don't have that dark shadow to show that it's like a hole in his hood and his ears are poking out. But like that would like immediately take this up like a lot if you just dark lined all around the hood. So you get good, good strong separation between the different elements and also sell that idea of like there's depth but it's like slotting in under there, even though in the actual sculpt it's not, it's one piece of resin. Uh, and then the other thing that you might do if you wanted to would be to like pull out some individual hairs on the, the beard, like just like, you could even do some like, very light dry brushing to like kind of create scratchy texture and uh, just because it's kind of nice the way it is, but it might have a little bit more like maximum light up there. Um, and yeah, and I really like the actual colors that you use, it's the kind of like blue green and then that contrast with your nice warm brand and your warm but pale skin tone. Uh, so hopefully that's helpful to you, Jim. Add something on there. Yeah, sure. Um, definitely um, push highlights on on the uh, facial hair, as Matt said. So you'd have like uh, a highlight running across sort of this sort of line here, not right on the top of it. It kind of it's slightly lower down, and then you'd want another one sort of on the top of here, across there, and on top of there. So you'd make a nice line of highlight across there, and then over here somewhere as well. So um, picking it out with like uh, vertical, thin, straight lines would be a really, really nice way of doing it. Um, pushing some, it looks quite saturated overall, the skin tone. So I think you've got some really nice colors in there. It's just really desaturated. So I think if you get some more shadow color in there, um, you've got this big like blue shadow in here, but I think you need to just like soften it around the eyes as well with some reds, um, great tones in the nose and it's all very smooth. Um, so yeah, that's all, that's all really nice. Um, for the hood. Yeah. As Matt said, it definitely needs shading more, uh, in the, uh, areas that he mentioned, but I think also you could just push some more volumetric shades around as well. So you could push the highlight a little bit higher on the top and then bring some darker tones sort of down the side. It looks like you're leaning into kind of a, a purple, um, shade color for it. So that would be cool. Just incorporate that a little bit more. It doesn't seem to be like a very deliberate like lighting angle on it so i guess you're just treating it as in you know it's just general zenithal so you just have like a slightly more shaded side bit and then these upturned faces would obviously catch the highest highlight um so you just do that on both sides really and then just um yeah just maybe put some texture in if you're trying to sell like a particular material for it um would be cool as well so um yeah there you go keep going an evening on a bust is no time at all so um spend some more time spend a lot more time and then spend more again uh keep pushing the bust they they take days weeks months to get absolutely bang on so yeah invest in the time it's, it's a really really solid start um so yeah keep going man keep pushing it thank you william okay on to adam Philia, was that the same Adam that posted earlier? Like number one? No, that was Adam Weller. Whoa. Okay. Um, we almost done a double dip. It's complete heresy. We cannot have it. Um, right. Uh, use of the airbrush on this piece was heavy. Trying to improve speed painting. Um, airbrush, hairy brush integration. Um, it doesn't look airbrushed to me. It doesn't. It doesn't have that sort of blatant you know, soft transition. So I think you've got uh, an extremely good balance um, between using the airbrush and then refining it with the brush um, because this looks absolutely awesome. And that is all, pretty much. I don't have much to be. I got um, the Alba highlight is a bit inconsistent. That's pretty much all I've got. So the Alba highlight, what I mean is... Um, where you picked it out beautifully down here, this thing's called the Alba. So it's just a little bit inconsistent in places. It should be a little bit higher, like right here in the middle of his chest. Um, and then for some reason, I'm not allowed to zoom in anymore. So thanks for that, Facebook, you suck. Um, so yeah, it's just like this sort of the shape of the abs is sort of curved here, but the Alba highlight you've done is like dead straight. So I would class that as a very very nitty nitpicky inconsistency there and then this one here's got like a dot and then a line and this one's got a dot and then a line 
So again, in just that's pretty much all I can pick out with this thing. It looks absolutely awesome. Like the texture you've got, the highlights you've got, the placement, the smoothness, picking out of the veins, separation in the teeth, absolutely epic, lifelight in the eyes, um, like all of the ridging and the contrast and stuff in the in the what's left of his clothes. Um, absolutely super. Base is believable, like mangled concrete that he's smashing up as he's jumping off. Absolutely. It's dynamic, the way things are bent and stuff. He could maybe have some more like small detritus, like sandy type, you know, texture just dribbled on there. That's about it, to be honest. I would have loved to see some more angles of it. Um, so, um, yeah, better pictures next time, please. You've got good lighting, but give us a clean background and some more angles. That would be amazing. Thank you. Um, but, yeah, congratulations. I think it looks awesome. Nice one. Thank you very much. Matt? Yeah, I agree with Jim. It's like doesn't have doesn't look airbrushed. You've obviously done whatever you needed to do to hide your normal brush marks with airbrush marks and vice versa or whatever. Just that's the whole thing. Airbrush leaves brush marks. They're just round. Um yeah, really nice contrast with skin. I like realistically that's what he's all about. I think maybe his foot could be a bit more highlighted if people care about feet. He just because he looks like he's lit. Like obviously it makes sense for his foot to be in shadow, but he looks kind of like he's lit from the front as well as above. Does that make sense? Uh, the way he's like jumping towards the camera and the way like his like lower abs are lit and everything, it looks like the light's coming like this. So I kind of feel like it would get his like, toes and stuff a bit more. Um, and just the greenness looks a lot less rich down on the toes. Because it's, yeah. So the other thing I would suggest you might want to try is while you're using your airbrush uh, to get speedy stuff done, is to use some filters of different colors. to um. The green is interesting because it can be warm or it can be cold. Um, so you could have like do like some blue up from below to give like cooler shadows, or you could red as well, which is a, a fun kind of contrasty thing. Because uh, it looks you're going up for it to a yellow green, which is a great look for the Hulk, and then it kind of goes into like a mid tone green and just a dark green. So it'd be nice to have more of that like warm cold contrast going on somewhere. And I think that's kind of most obvious in the foot where it has that like it's just like a couple of tones of green look to it. Uh, I would check out on uh, Putty and Paint, like Google Hulk on Putty and Paint, and like Jesus Gomez is a really great one where he hasn't played like, he's got like a warm side and a cold side, and then there's another one that has a similar thing but more dramatic. But I think it's a really good look for him, for the Hulk, because he's um, because he's so green, like it's nice to do something a little bit more interesting with it. But in terms of just highlighting him up, and like I think that the, all of the, the mid-range to highlight looks great, and like it would just be like the cherry on the ice cream cake to have like some other color in the shadows as well. Because like Jim said, he's super well painted. Um, thanks for submitting. Uh, next one's Cody Baker, painted for a Dragon Age based D and D game. Gonna have to get used to saying the taint all the time. The five games of Dragon Age are called the taint for some reason. Don't know if they knew that was funny at the time or not. Um, yeah, it looks really good. Uh, it's like a Yuan T thing. I think. Um, I like the color choices. Like I like that kind of like jade is a great color for like a snake creature thing. Uh, and I think it was a great idea to do the two-tone where you have it like dark on the back and warm on the belly. Uh, and the gold weapons is a nice choice as well because it gives it that kind of like vaguely Egyptian-y kind of vibe or like ostentatious or whatever. Um, where you could up it a little bit. I think the scales could have dark lining. So there's two ways of doing this. You could try and do oil washes. I'd say this would be a really good figure for oil washes if you want to like dip your toe in there. I don't know exactly uh, where on, you would be on that, but uh, or you can kind of like use normal acrylic washes and either paint it in carefully to get into all the grooves, uh, or like do it kind of over the whole thing and then repaint over your base coat, which takes longer. Uh, they're both valid options, um, and as well like on, that'll help tidy up stuff a bit because you can see as well on his arm bracer thing, kind of got like this. There's a, a couple of panels where like you've got the skin tone and the gold are mixed together, whereas if you did a wash and then reapply the, the base color there, that would like deal with that for you as far as the same step. Um, and then I think probably if you're able to pick out his eye, I think an orange would be a really nice color. Mm -hmm. Like the tongue is obviously drawing a lot of attention up there. Have like an orange or yellow eye uh, would be great. And these guys are kind of good in that you can do a slip pupil if you really want. 
or even just have it be a solid orb would just like really take it up to the, the next uh, step. And then I don't know exactly what you want to do for basing because obviously it's going to depend on the campaign. But I think a bit more than that would be nice when you decide what kind of environment you'd like your snake person to be in. Uh, Jim? Um, yeah, it looks cool. Um, but as Matt said, um, the separation is really what, what's going to make it stand out. So um, two things... Um, for you to focus on um next time you paint something or maybe uh have a smash at it this one is indeed wash it first and then also this would be a great opportunity to dry brush as well to pick out these scales so you wouldn't dry brush the entire thing just like some areas where it's more raised and catching the light so um artist opus on um youtube have uh fantastic tutorials on how to dry brush um case in point number one tip is don't do it with a dry brush it sounds silly because it's called dry brushing, but no, it really should be called damp brushing or moist brushing, but it just doesn't roll off the tongue as well. Um, so yeah, check out Artist Opus on YouTube for um, dry brush tutorials. That would really pop it. I think orange is the perfect color to do this eye as well. I was going to say that. Um, and then my final piece of advice for you would be to invest in a little pot of, and I'm not endorsed in any way by GW, it's this just my most favourite paint in my whole collection, is buy some snake bite leather contrast paint. Paint this thing a bone colour, or perhaps even a white colour, and then apply your new snake bite leather to that and watch the magic happen, my friend. It is the best way to paint leather, quick, fast and awesome. So, uh, yeah, good luck with that. Um, but, yeah, it looks cool. And good luck on your uh, D&D campaigns. And may you prosper. Uh, next up, John Israel again. So, um, uh, not going to competition with this one. Uh, could be cleaner, we know. But uh, concerned with whether or not I got the armor shading right and if we made the right decisions with NMM on the calves and ankles. And if the coloration of the gun looks good. Um, so, let's go. Um Number one thing is why your picture so blurry this time. I don't know. Uh, maybe check the actual lens on your phone because quite often I find if you can't get the blurriness to go away, it's because you've got a smudge on your lens very annoyingly. Um, but from what we can see from the picture, yeah, I think this looks really, really cool. Um, it's a lot more subtle, like on the front this time. So I think this angle looks the best, like the, the soft infusion of colors into the ankles excuse me and and the armor plates is really really nice from the front you've got a good contrast as well in the blues and like the like magenta pinky accents are really really cool it looks wicked from this angle i'm not so mad keen on the back though because it's like a completely different color it's not just like a, a, a shaded version of what's on the front. It's like the, we're now getting into the greens, like on the calves and ankles. And it's like blatantly blue sort of on the back. Uh, I get, I get, I like this um, pink uh, OSL effects you've got going on on the antenna. That's really cool. But like when you spin him round, that's a hell of a jump from this to that in like in terms of hue it's not just like a shade it's just a completely different color this is what it reads like to me um so if you could do this on the back it would look awesome i think because the lighting is not that different front and back in terms of you know brightness it's not like this is a blue coming from um you know a moonlight or sort of reflected off water or anything like that it's just it's just a different hue it's just a different color so i think just keep it more simple and yeah you can infuse these colors in just like you've done on the front how you're mixing the blues and the magentas and the purples and stuff it all looks ace it looks really really nice um i just think the back doesn't work as well i like this blue green kind of metal it kind of looks like a cyberpunk steel kind of thing it looks cool but it's it's just too far gone from like the front so um i think maybe you've even left the calves and the ankles on the back this color but then just brought the rest of the armor more in line with the front that that could still sell because it'd be like a, a different material for whatever reason and that'd be absolutely fine um let's see what else i had um yeah the eyes um again because it's quite blurry it looks like you could maybe it looks like kind of a flat application of the magenta 
forgive me if it's not in real life, but it just looks like they could be a bit brighter and you could maybe put a little bit of the pink uh, around the edges of it as like a, a very, very subtle like OSL effect to show that it's a, a glowing uh, pink eye because like, th these are apparently strong enough to cast pink light up onto these. So you'd imagine that the from this side, this would be sort of artistically impressionate to put them on the ridges of the white as well a little bit. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's a great use of color. Oh, on the gun as well, you said, didn't you? Um, so yeah, the orange on the gun. Yeah, I think it's okay. It's the only instance of orange apart from on this side, on this holster, like this, I think it's supposed to be leather. Um, it's the only instance of the orange. So like having it a bit more muted is, is a good choice. Um, and again, into that sort of, you know, like sea green sort of steel effect, like that cyberpunky feel on the black to make it a bit more interesting. Yeah, again, a bit blurry. I think there's a nice highlight running down that barrel, but I can't really see from the picture. Um, so, yeah, I think the lighting and the colours on the gun and that are good as well. So, um, yeah, nice stuff. It looks good, John. Thank you very much, Matt. Yeah, I totally agree for the most part. Uh, I think the, uh, the calves, like the, the enemy on the calves are great. Like, it's really nice, really smooth. Love the actual steel colour. But then the armour on the back looks like it's just a different colour to you. Like, it looks like it's classic pan out color scheme as opposed to like white uh, and then like that gets a bit confusing because you have like blue glowing happening so it kind of makes it feel like the lighting situation on the legs isn't that much different but then on like the back plate like it, it's just yeah it just looks like it's he has blue panels and some of them actually are blue some of them are meant to be blue and some of them are meant to be tinged blue but you should really just have the ones that are meant to be white you know Tone down the blue, use a dark, if you're trying to show that he's like dark, it's darker behind him, just have it like be blue, gray, up to medium gray, and like a, a bit of white, as opposed to on the front where you have a broader area of white. And um, just because like in isolation, like the calves look perfect, and then the rest, the rest of his back doesn't look, you know, to the same standard. Uh, and yeah, orange in the gun is a nice touch. Um, you could do like his like insignia or something on the opposite side in orange if you wanted to balance it out to be like this is like a literally painted on accent color. Um, and yeah, I think the kind of like the edge lighting on the gun is pretty cool. If you wanted to be like super uh, try hard, you could do parts of the gun in the same NMM that you did the calves in, like the barrel, you kind of got halfway there. You could have some parts of it that are like machine steel and the rest of it could be like black plastic because it's like a future weapon or whatever but yeah it's a good looking thing just um just like be careful in terms of your like what's blue tinged and what's actually blue uh going forward uh thanks a million look forward to seeing more from you in the future uh always good as well to take a break i mean like you know it doesn't have to be a conversation piece not everything has to be your best work you know you just you, know, you just have to paint okay eddie stanbury has this boss nick ross who is some sort of orc for some sort of 40k game i'm assuming uh it looks cool um i uh like how like limited your palette is like he's basically green and he's standing on like orange ground and he has pink lights like that's a good choice it's very easy to get overwhelmed with like adding more and more and more colors um, and it tends to make these work like a little bit less um uh effective uh overall um and I like how like, you've got that orange going flames going into the smoke and stuff like that. And it's very high poppy contrast with those colors. So yeah, good work overall uh, on that. And uh, I thought the OSL, it's like really over the top, which I think is fine for this kind of figure. Like the fact that his face is glowing, like in terms of like realism, that wouldn't happen with the light pointing away from his face. So it wouldn't come back, but like you can get away with it because he's like, he's got so many lights and it's so ridiculous. But I find it kind of weird how it's like lighting up the chains on his shoulder behind his head, even though it's not like it suggests there's like a light pointing that way. But then even his his ear is lit up, and then the thing behind his ear is lit up. So I just think it's gone a bit too far there, unless there is literally a, another light there that we can't see in the photos. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's apart from that, it's a really nice over the top orky kind of OSL effect going on there. Um. And then the grenade that's on the ground, I think you could bed that down a little bit more. Like, it looks like you put down a texture paste and, like, dropped it on top and it's, like, smooshed out around it. Um, so just, like, feather out, get, like, a wet brush and just feather out the edge as you do that. Or you could add on more and just, like, create a, 
I want to say gradient, but that's not the word. A, Transition. A, like a slant. <laughs> yeah, just like a line going up from, a, like a slope. A slope, that's it, going up from the ground. So it's not just like looking like it's dropped into a big bowl of porridge or whatever. Um, and then I like the kind of rusty steel look you've got on his swords. But I think that on his right sword, it's like, in the photo anyway, it's like almost completely rusted out. And the left one is like much more uh, shiny and metallic. So I don't know if that's like an artifact to the angle the photo is at. But I much prefer the one where it's like got a, you know, got a proper steel cutting edge at least. Because if it, it, you know, it needs to have the functional parts of it are, are not rusted through. Uh, and it just looks more interesting that way. But yeah, I think it's really cool. I like the way you got like pigment up on his toes and everything like that. So um, good work overall. Jim, um, yeah, I agree. Uh, I think the rusty, the rusty stuff's looking really good. Um, yeah, I'd sharpen this blade up, as Matt said. That's definitely a good point. Um, uh, the smoke looked really, really cool, and like it's, you know, really, really nice. Have you had like the? It looks like there's kind of heat inside that smoke. It's not all just black or grey smoke. You've done a really nice job of like bringing that out, and then the fire it gets hotter and whiter towards the actual canister. So that looks that looks really, really cool. Nice work. Um, I like the texture that's been left from dry brushing on the skin. That gives it some interest, and there's like some nice toning. You've, it's got a bit of islanding going on, but I don't think it matters too much because it it kind of looks like um, I'm assuming this is for tabletop, but it kind of looks like kind of grim dark styly. And actually, I actually quite enjoy it on this. And like how you put the the skin tones in on the knuckles and the ears and lips and stuff. You know, it's really great, really great. Um techniques for orc skin so that's all really good um i completely agree with matt that you don't need any of this osl behind here and then what you also need to do is reinforce the shadows in between everything because painting osl is as much about painting what isn't there as what is actually cast light so you need deeper shadows between all these wrinkles so go in uh hyper thin um and just re-establish all of the separation that's around here um, would be really really helpful same for the feet and the dusting and stuff it's nice that it's there but just think you need some uh washes or some um inks or something just to like separate everything because they're all kind of glued together with the with the um the pigment like effect so like you need occlusion shadows between all the different materials that'd be really cool um and then the same for a base the base is kind of lacking a little bit i wasn't sure whether this is supposed to be like orange light cast from the grenade or just the like the actual color of the ground so it just leads a little bit more either pick out high details and uh, push in different colors around that it all just kind of looks like a lump of one color so try and get some variation in on the base that'd be really really cool um and then what was the other thing i had uh duh, 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 duh. uh no i already talked about that so um yeah there you go. I hope that's helpful, Eddie. Thank you very much. He's looking good. Let's move on up to uh, Mikhail with the latest piece. Um, trying to focus on painting more contrasted light dark setup uh, with front being exposed to light and back in the shadow. I ended up with typical tabletop send of the light and all the sides equally highlighted. Can't figure it out. Leaving something darker feels wrong to me. Um, Yes, you're right. You have ended up with that uh, full zenithal thing. But this is a perfect model for full zenithal, I would suggest. There is so much to look at. There are so many different materials, textures, uh, opportunities for colour, um, you know, micro texture, lighting, shading. I don't understand why anybody would want to put half of this model in the dark anyway. If you want to try and do something like that, pick something that's got a really boring backside. But I think there's there's not much difference between like visual interest from the back of this model to the front. And I think that's probably why you just kept going. And you're like, right, there's there's more ridges, I need more highlights. Ah, there's more occlusion, I need more shadow. Oh, this is a different material. How would this interact with light? Oh, now I've got NMM on the on the thing. And now I've got leather, and now I've got red, and now I've got yellow and purple. And you can't just leave all that to just, you know, into shadow, into darkness, bit of a moonlight effect. It would be such a waste. So I think you've done the right thing, and you I think you've rendered everything really beautifully here. It's all very nicely separated. You've got great, like 
contrasting shadow colors on everything a uniform shadow color in, in in most places like using this purple or this magenta retone uh like getting the graining in the wood the reflections on the metals you could maybe push a little bit more in this steel plate it looks like it's supposed to be like quite highly polished um so you can maybe push highlight band across um that breastplate a little bit more on the back <coughs> uh, excuse me but honestly i think you really really nailed it on this um like the, the blood stain on like the eye strap bandage thing that's there is really good um a bit of a i can see where you got the tricky here you got the leather of the hat and then you've got the white of the face and then you've got a bandage which is somewhere in between so you didn't want to go much brighter because you didn't you wanted it to contrast from the uh from the white on the face but i think you could probably push this like a little bit more to like the bone sort of value as it is a little unless it is supposed to be a piece of leather but i think it would maybe supposed to be like a bandage is more like a um kind of like an ivory bony kind of color um but yeah wicked effects like with the blood in there that really sells um and then just like the small details second reflections in this like um oh what are they called what are the yellow gems called i can't remember not opals topaz? is it topaz the yellow one anyway whatever it's called how that's like differentiated from the gold that's really nice uh, blood effects on the weapon, super awesome. So I think you nailed it with this. Don't don't beat yourself up over the whole lighting situation. This needed full zenithal, and you nailed it. So pick a model with a boring back and try again with lots of reference pictures. Um, I'm confident you can do it. This looks awesome. Well done, uh, Matt. Over to you. Might be citrine. Citrine might be a yellow gem. I think there's more than one anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I love this guy. This guy is like, I just absolutely love him. He's like, look, he's such a little guy. He's having such a great time. I love his like multicolored pants and like the fact that he's like, ah, I've got literally two different colors. Got two different colors on one leg and two different other colors on the other leg and it's all asymmetrical and stuff. Like he's so much fun. And yeah, like as Jim said, it's completely understandable. And like the way you base him, he's like in a field. So you're like, okay, well, if he's lit and moved and he's in a field, not actually going to be that much difference in the back um so yeah this is a pro tip for you, a genuine pro tip i was at a class with parker Frizzoni, and he said if you want it to have really strong directional lighting don't put it on a round plinth because when you put it on a round plinth that's telling you like oh it's it's equal in all directions so you rotate it around and when you look at the back it's like it's like he just rotated around and in your head you're like yeah there's no difference between the front and the back so you put them on like a square a bigger square plinth and then um, make it asymmetrical so it like slopes up in the back and has like some trees dotted up in it. And then you get a feeling like, oh, he's like coming out of the woods and the light is in front of him. Uh, and that gives you like, makes it way easier for you to sell that idea that the light is coming from the side and also have the light coming from the side, like, like this way, not like down. Cause like you've done it from basically from a very steep angle from the front and then from a very steep angle from the back, which like is the classic zenithal thing, where you're like, this is, there's very little difference there. So yeah, like Jim said, there was no real reason to do it on this model, but take someone else who you think was gonna be in a in a lighting situation where they're like coming out of a deep dark wood, make the base show that, and then in your head you're gonna like automatically be like, okay, well I mean, this is this is a darker area, this is a lighter one, and then like the ultimate expression of that and the laziest one is when you just put a backdrop <laughs> on your figure. You don't even paint the back. <laughs> don't do that. Do it the other way. Make it a make it like some sort of asymmetrical base so we can kind of feel like he's in two different environments. Um, oh, and also one of the big tricks for not leaving something dark is that everyone just cheats and they make their their like reflected highlight basically as bright as their main highlight, but just in a bluer tone. Um, but yeah, it's not an easy thing to do by any any, any metric. And again, it would be really hard when you've got all these different colors in the guy where you're like. Oh well, how would the yellow and purple interact with the different light source behind him versus the red and blue? And like, you don't want to—you don't want that to be your life. Uh, do like something pretty simple, and for that express purpose. But yeah, he looks great. Looks great the way he is. Uh, then we have Aaron Goodge trying to do tabletop piece with green face and skin. This guy also looks like he's having a great time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I really like how much. Yeah, <laughs> I really like how much like. The face pops out with his big derpy white teeth and his big red tongue. Uh, I think the green skin looks really nice the way it's kind of got that yellowy, sickly hue to it. I think 
I don't know if he's meant to be like a super, he reminds me of Super Mutants from Fallout 3. Um, I think in terms of, if we're just looking at skin, uh, it would be nice to get some extra separation in places like in between the fingers, like go back in with a wash and just like line it in there kind of carefully. Uh, so like a red brown would be a nice one for that. And you could also use a red brown on the leather parts that would work kind of well and just try and separate then the skin and the leather or other parts a little bit because there's a few places where you've got like little bits of brand that are up on the skin which could be like dirt but also i think it's just like a stray brush mark or whatever um but yeah i think like if you're going for the skin of the face like you know the rest of the stuff can be it's fine for what it is uh, i would change your wood color though because it's like literally the most boring color i've ever seen of like yellowy brownie whatever it is just like uh pick another color like it doesn't really matter just any, another brown you find or because it basically you can use that color like it's a pretty realistic wood color but then you're gonna have to do all the grain marks and stuff to make it look interesting uh whereas like when you paint something like a generic brand you're basically telling people don't look at this um but that might be what you're looking to do but yeah he looks like he's having a great time uh so yeah, oh, you could also do uh, his lips a little bit redder as well, because um, like he has a red tongue, so it would make sense if his bottom lip was also red or purple or what have you, just to kind of like because it's the color of his, his blood in under there, and uh, and good work doing the eyes as well. Jim, mm. yes, um, nice looking beastly ogre dude. He looks a little bit like the Fonz. He just needs a thumb up, and yeah, he's having a, he's having an awesome time, isn't he? Um, I think um, a couple of things um, for you to focus on um, would just be, the first one would just be cleanliness. So um, my point being that if you can get in here and do this level of detail, then you definitely can avoid doing like the overspill, like on the teeth and the metals and like on the toes are the ones that really stand out. So some of it's really clean, like on these, um, uh, like the, the hand wraps and like around this belt thing and obviously doing the eye as well like you you can do it it just seems like you've you've slapped this together really really quickly and you, you've kind of let it down to be honest um so yeah just cleanliness would be like the number one thing um number two thing don't use pure white for teeth use like a bone color and then you can use white a little bit mixed into the bone color to like highlight it but never you it's it's too bright for teeth they never look like this it's the same for the whites of the eyes really it should be kind of like a very um a very 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 cold bright gray uh or like a or like a very very high highlight for a, a skin color like elfic flesh so close very close to white but not actually dead white it never looks right they look too stark um so yeah avoid the bright whites except for when you're absolute maximum highlighting something um, and then, yeah, as Matt said, I think you could definitely benefit from uh, washing the browns uh, and the leathers. That would really, really help. Um, so I think for the most part, you've definitely done the best job on the skin. So that, that does definitely look the best. Um, as Matt said, getting some um, flesh tones around the mouth, nose, ears, knuckles, um, knees as well, in fact, looks really cool. Um, but, yeah, that's that's kind of down the road, I think, a little bit. So, um, yeah. I uh, yeah, I employ you to just try those few things out and get things tidied up, Aaron. Thank you very much for submitting. Okay, up to Bealkins, uh, commenting on the latest work, which is the first human bust from Bealkins. Um, so looking for overall impression as well as strong and some weaker points that I should work on. Okay, um, straight in strong would be skin and lighting. Weak would be the painting of the back of the model. Uh, as simple as that <laughs> or should i say the lack of painting the back of the model to be brutally honest with you because like when i saw this thing i was like dude that is screaming with life and expression and energy this is everything right here and then like i was a bit let down by this shoulder pad i was like wow this this shoulder's so much better than this and then got to the back and was like oh man Really, that is a letdown. So, like, what I really like is the skin, the texture in the skin, the separation over everything. Like, the hair looks like you've photoshopped it on, to be honest. I have no idea how you've managed to make that look so convincing, but you have. Like, the scars 
It's all supreme work in the skin. It looks awesome. The separation between the teeth is a little bit too dark, I would think. Like, uh, it's never, if you look at eye teeth, it's never that thick black. So I'd, I'd maybe try and soften that separation in the teeth. That's pretty much it, to be honest. Like, the rest of the skin and the hair and that is all absolutely awesome. Like, I love it. He looks he looks awesome. Not much criticism there. Then for the this shoulder, oopsie, this shoulder looks really, really cool. I don't know what material that's supposed to be, but it looks great. Um, you could maybe bring some more red, uh, like run the run the gamut of the red a little bit more uh, up to highlights and shadows or the orange. I'm not quite sure from, from there what it's supposed to be. Um, and these metals look cool, but what what you've done is you, you've highlighted this in like heavy metal style and you've done it nicely but heavy metal style does not work on busts at all you need to have more uh modulation on these panels and you need to have higher highlights and it needs to have a lot more visual interest than this if it is black armor then only 50 percent of it needs to be black the rest of it needs to be the running the gamut up through the grays or interference colors or something like it's just in fact it's not even black is it? it's like a very very dark blue so you could even just shade shade the blue and then have this as your highest highlights but it'd have to the shadows would have to go much 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 darker um you don't need to put battle damage on it it's a very interesting way to add you know a little something extra to it like some of these little these rivet holes or whatever they are they could have their edges picked out that would be nice um, there's a bit of texture on these plates here that could be picked out. I know it's on the back, but if you put this in my head and said, what do you think of that? Like, I would be turning it around, definitely. So always paint the back. I'm a big advocate for painting the back. Um, and that is, that is pretty much here, I think. Um, yeah, that's it. So amazing work on the skin and everything. Um, don't separate teeth with black. And then, uh, yeah, just work these metals on the back, man. Uh, and this will be absolutely stunning. It is lovely. Work. Oh, and this scar is, is supreme as well. Really, really nice work. So congratulations. Great piece, Matt. Yeah, I love the, uh, I love the skins. Love the modeling on, like, the scalp and the kind of, like, purpley tone around his eyes. The way he's done the hair and his chest and the scars. Really, really good work. Um, on the armor... Yeah, like as Jim said, it looks more like chips and stuff, but the like, the, like it's just too big a volume of just this one tone. You could do like freehand on there, where you could have it just like be a different color, like it's painted white with like black underneath or whatever, and stuff's like falling off. I do actually like the kind of chippy highlighting because it gives him this kind of like manic energy, where like because he already has that, but he looks like you know his armor is bashed up, even though he's like a cyberpunk guy, he's not maintaining it properly, and like he's falling apart himself because it's part of him. Uh, and yeah, if you're going to do the back as like dark, then you shouldn't have done the head, the, the skin wrapping around like to the same degree. Like, because basically the skin is telling us that the back is lit the same way that the front is lit. If that makes sense. So then we just look at it and say, well, the back isn't, isn't painted. Um, whereas if you're going to do that, you can do like less work on the back, but like on every part of it. Um, and then. Yeah, I thought it'd be nice as well if inside of his mouth you had some like uh, specular highlighting, like on his teeth and his tongue and his uh, lips, to show like the spit in there is like reflecting light out because he looks mental anyway. And like there would be like the lights coming like this, it's gonna glisten off the inside of his mouth, whereas it looks very like dry in there at the moment. But it'll be the same as like having those like wet highlights in the eye. Um, but yeah. Uh, really great work overall and obviously the workshops are, are, are doing you good so look forward to seeing how you get on in the future uh next is tony hodge not too late to submit for december yeah we take him till the last day of the month and maybe a little bit after that depending on his video but no guarantees that like you're guaranteed to get in if it's before the last day of the month no matter what facebook tells you just so you know uh latest figure trying to attempt nmm very good uh some sort of elf guy um Tony, next one, sorry. Um, yeah, it, look, it looks good. I like the colors, green, blue, yellow, or green, purple, yellow. It's a nice combo. Um, it's a very hard figure to be figuring out NMM on mm. because that whole elaborate filigreed metal armor 
is like super complicated in terms of having all these different faces and panels and curves and stuff, and you can't get reference for it because it doesn't exist in real life. So I would recommend uh, trying a more simple, like an actual, like a historical looking knight or a figure that didn't have full plate armor uh, for practicing on. Um, but given what we have here, I would say that the best gold NMM, the best NMM overall for me is on the staff, like the gold kind of band of his spear, all, all the cylindrical shapes, they look really good. And then it would be the kind of gold on the shield. I think that could, because it's such a bigger area, I think it could do with having like some other colors in there, like some like mahogany, some sort of reddish colors, maybe some greenish gold down near the bottom where it's reflecting off the, the uh, dragon head and stuff. Uh, and then the sword blade is pretty good. It just needs to have more like maximum highlights, like glinting highlights. It needs to go up to your brightest possible white in a couple of places. It goes down to your darkest dark, but it just doesn't, doesn't do it the other end. It goes up to like a, like it's, it's lighter, darker colored nearly than his hair kind of thing. That might be like to do with photos as well, but like you need to have like a maximum extreme point highlight. Like, and actually all of your metals kind of have that because that's like a, like it's reflected light. It's just, if you had a sword blade like that or a glaive or whatever, it's just going to be a reflection of the sun. That's like a circle in it or like a line if it's been distorted. So you just need to get that in there somewhere. You could also have some interference color, or I mean, you have a lot of blue in there already, but it, the darker shadows could come, you could have like a secondary light kind of in them, a dot or whatever, just to show um, a secondary light. Uh, and then the actual armor, I don't think it really reads gold in general. In some places it does, if you just look at like some of the panels, the shoulder pads, but you also run into that issue where with NMM, it kind of all sells or it doesn't sell. So it starts looking like it's maybe like leather, maybe like a like that kind of like a illustrator's version of, of metal where it's not like super shiny or super realistic, but it looks like metallic E. But like if you look at like his thigh, like it's just like yellow solid on top and you compare that to the, it's a cylinder, it's a big cylinder. And then on the spear half, you've got this big cylinder and it has a much better, like it looks like actually like gold on the spear half. So like I, I'm not, 100% sure you like if you're going for gold on the armor, it doesn't look anything like the gold that you have in other places around the figure, is what I'm saying. But like it would be extremely difficult to get that armor to look like real gold, though, like because that's what it even looks like. Um, and then the last thing I was going to say is yeah, I really like the uh, the green gem that you've done on his front, and like the one on the shield or the freehand on the shield is pretty good. Uh, but yeah, uh, and then, yeah, some of the NMM on the legs, I just pick an, an easier figure is what I would say to you for next time because, like, it sells in parts uh, really well, but especially that armor is just, like, a big, big ask to get that to, to read as, to sell the illusion of metal. You can make it look like it's meant to be metal, if that makes sense, but it's never going to quite trick people because it's never going to look like something they have seen in real life that is metal, I think. Jim? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to disagree to a small extent, um, with you. I think he's, um, I think it's selling pretty well, actually. I think you're, you're most of the way there, but as, as Matt said, like if it, if there's one point that's, that's killing the effect, it, it kills the effect of NMM. He's absolutely right. Um, and I think for the most part is it's really, really strong. Um, so like the reason this is selling so well is because you've got like a really stark contrast like between the midtone, the highlight, and the and the shadow. Um, and that's that's really good. You're running a good gamut everywhere, but it's like the shape of this is perfectly reflecting light and shadows, how our eyes are, you know, conditioned to see it. With something like this, there's a few shadows that are out of place that are just killing it. And I think it's this band of shadow that kind of runs down his abdomen from like his left pectoral down to the ab here. There, there isn't really a reason for this shadow to be here. These are sort of rounded shapes. So you'd have shadows towards the bottom of them. Yeah, but I think these 
so this panel here doesn't need the shadow there that needs to be mid-tone and these ones here need to be more the color of sort of this side this side of his body looks much better i think it's just this shadow here that's that's killing the effect because if you look at this section here that to me looks a hundred percent like gold with secondary reflections and a nice shadow where you expect to see it the shoulders are very very tricky shapes anyway and you know as as matt said we don't really see those in in real life so it's but we can still you know detect whether the the material is behaving the way that we would expect it to and it's nearly there i think it's just a question of smoothness in the shoulders and uh smoothness on the shield as well so some of these blends here are a little bit choppy but like where you've put the highlights is absolutely bang on and like having the bright, brightest bit next to the darkest bit, you know, you've really got a handle on how it works. And like having these secondary reflections in here, third reflections, not as bright, you know, random placement of it. I think you've done a really, really, really good job. Um, with this leg that Matt uh, pointed out as well, you just need to shadow sort of this portion of the thigh, a, a heavier, like to, to sort of this kind of shadow level. If that was running down the thigh sort of here, that would really, really sell then. Really bright, falls away into shadow, and then you'd have a bounce light. So this this sort of mid-tone you've got on the lower portion would would look like a secondary reflection, and that'd be really, really good. Um, so yeah, I and like as Matt said, these bits on the on the staff, absolutely because this is a much simpler shape to paint, you've absolutely nailed it on those. They look beautiful, gorgeous. So um, yeah, hats off to you, kudos for picking such a monumentally difficult thing to do NMM on. But yeah, I think you're doing a stellar job, man. Absolutely. Keep going for it. Um, just try and, yeah, try and figure out this, like this shadow that's running down his abdomen. I, I think that would really, really help. If that was looking more like this side, I think that would, that would really help things along. Um, yeah, keep going, man. I'm excited for you because this is really, really strong. So yeah, hope that helps. And cool model as well. I'm not sure if that's from Lord of the Rings or something. He looks like a Lord of the Ringsy elf, doesn't he? But do you know where that's from? Yeah. No, it looked vaguely familiar, but I I couldn't tell you where I've seen it before. No, he looks cool. I like him. I want to paint one. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, Alessandro, um, not at all sold on the female skin, um, and also the crazy eyes. <laughs> um, so yeah, um. These kind of look like quite um, quick, simple for a game or something. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, yeah, I think the lady's skin is like quite pale and lacks the contrast that's in the male skin. I know that they're like more angular in terms of their body structure. So it kind of lends itself to uh, highlighting and shading a bit easier. But um, female skin does have the same sort of level of contrast in the hues it's just a lot softer so rather rather than having aggressive shadows and highlights you just push tones around like the pinks and the reds um like in the thighs and in the knees elbows sort of places like that push you around rather than really angular shadows that the guys have got um the crazed eyes i think they look okay but as i said in a couple of video um reviews back uh, like the bright white is is too much in the eyes so dial that back to like a venerisian gray or an elfic flesh or something like that not dead white in the eyes um it's also lacking the life light so they they don't look alive yet um but in general i think they look they look pretty cool like some of the separations are a little bit mixy so like try and tidy that up a little bit like where the robes meet the bodies like there's another uh, sort of version of it here um, but yeah, so just pushing around. Oh, the bases are really creepy as well. I, I really like it, but um, maybe just try and brighten up some of them, even if it's just like around the edge of them. So it's looking like she's kind of shading the ones that are underneath it. I think that would add a little bit more interest. Um, and yeah, maybe just a little bit more contrast in the fabrics. They look a little bit like they were painted white and then shaded and that was it in some places so this one looks better but like when you go back to the ladies one it's all a bit kind of you know a little bit monotone in terms of shading um so yeah maybe picking up some highlights or putting some texture into those would be cool uh red hair looks really really nice so that's the sort of level of contrast you need to go with on on the fabrics as well and i think you'll be in a pretty good place so uh yeah we're looking good uh matt yeah, I think they're pretty cool. 
Uh, yeah, like Jim said, the problem with your ladies is that you made their skin super pale, but like if someone's that pale, you can see through their skin, like it's transparent. So you start seeing like reds and blues and that are in the underlying flesh and blood and stuff. So if you just do them in a really pale white, it starts to look fake because anyone who is that pale isn't like like that color. Uh, so yeah, you could just use, you could do them like more like pale skin tone, or you could, yeah, like Jim said, add in a lot more hue in various other places. Uh, but you never want to make someone that pale without adding in color because pale people have loads of color to their skin so you can see through it. And then kind of ink coming out of their eyes. I think you could just try and get that like thinner, like the kind of art for these guys is like, it's like maybe tears running out, but you have it like they, they it all comes together and it looks kind of like they like corpse paint, like they're in a black metal band, so they just painted like their eyes black. So yeah, get it more like runny down. Probably using some sort of ink would be the way to do that. Get it really thin and flowing. And I think the hair looks pretty good. It's just that it's like it's a very unnatural color. So like it's hard to get it to look natural because like people don't have blue hair or red hair of that kind of color. But on the on the back of the girl with the red hair, it looks really, really good. So just do that. You can, like bring those highlights up in the front a little bit. And then the girl with the blue hair, it's a bit trickier. I'd try to make it like darker because like make it like blue black. Maybe that would work a little bit better. And just look up, uh, for reference, just look up blue hair dye and like look at the model on the on the pack and that'll give you exactly what you're looking to do. Uh, but yeah, good work. Uh, I, I'm, I'm looking at liking them. Um, and enjoy the game. Human Death is a horrible game, but uh, it's pretty good as well. Uh, and then the last submission for the month, right in the last bell, Castor Wendelbow, doing this bust uh, since around April, following it finished. Uh, I'd like to get a smoother finish on the NMM and advice on the light and the skin. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Uh, yeah, it looks really good, especially the NMM. Uh, I'm not sure it has to be much smoother. Like, it kind of looks to me like oiled metal, like as if it's like, it's steel that's not like been polished up loads, but it's like kind of dark environment uh, like 10,000 grit sandpaper to use on it so they still have marks on them um, Matt, so do I, I don't know if it needs to be Matt, hang on, hang on. You're going to have to start all that again because you warbled out for the whole thing and you've only just come back in, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Casper. It's it's just intercontinental uh, mm. nonsense. Okay. So, well, great work. Thanks for submitting. Uh, I think the NMM, I don't think it needs to be a lot more smooth because it looks kind of like brushed steel, like as in it's an actual piece of armor. And then the highlights on it look kind of like you'd get on like oiled metal, like they're reflecting because they're so small, like dots. They're just reflecting off like the the like linseed or whatever is on the metal. Um, and I think it looks generally pretty good and it's in a dark environment. So it's kind of hard to like, I don't think it needs to be a lot more smooth. Uh, it can be, but that just gives it a different look. Um, and then skin looks good, but it's very, um, like monotone, it's like looks like it's all kind of like one color. Like she needs a lot more red in her lips. Like they're this kind of very peachy pastel color, but like lips aren't that color, they're red because they're just like the color of the inside of your mouth. Um, and then you could do the same red, just if you can get it like right on the inside of the eyelids, that looks really good because it separates the, the, like you have this red line around the inside of your eye, like in here. I think the eyes look really good, like the blue eye with the highlight and the, like the, the eyelashes as well. Uh, and I like the color that you used for your freckles. It's very natural, but they're a bit too big uh, and evenly dispersed um, everywhere. I think under her left eye, they look the best, but like freckles are pretty subtle. Like I'm covered in freckles. You wouldn't notice it that much. And someone who's pale, who has a small number of freckles, like they always start here. Like they're on the bridge of your nose, on your cheeks. Then you get a bit like in a line here, then they spread out. You don't tend to get a lot up around here or here because your hair like creates a shadow. Um, and then you need to have some on your chin as well. And she looks like she has like some sort of birthmark, beauty marker or something there, but it's not like in a different color. Um, but uh, yeah, I really love the color that you've done for the fabric as well. It's very regal looking. She kind of reminds me of like 
with that like Queen Elizabeth film with Kate Blanchett, and she's got that kind of armor or like Joan of Arc maybe kind of character. Uh, yeah, I really like it. Jim? Um, yeah, I agree. Um, I don't think really smoothness is, is the issue. I think you could probably broaden the highlights a bit. Um, so like where the specular is, 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 is a bit of a jump, but like where you've placed the lights is, is all, is all selling. I think that's cool. Um, and yeah, much the same as what Matt said, really in the skin, like you could get more color, um, more hues in like, so underneath the eyes, you get sort of reds and blues. You need to shade this section here, like below the eyebrow that needs, um, kind of a rosy kind of shade to it. Um, definitely more reds in, in the nose and in the ears. Uh, this section down here gets kind of a, in fact, if you have a look at, um, it sounds like a really ridiculous thing to say, but go and watch some like makeup tutorials for women and you'll see how they add certain colors in certain places. It's really, really helpful for painting female busts because although not necessarily she's going to wear makeup, that those makeups, they ex they exaggerate where the highlights and shadows are to bring out the structure in their face. They kind of paint the structure of the face on to make them more beautiful, if you want. Um, so yeah, check out check out some makeup videos. Um, and also, there's another um, source you might look at called like color zones in the face. So where you find blues, where you find greens, where you find yellows, um, grays. So like yellows are up here. You get some green just like down here. Reds obviously are sort of in the nose and blushing pinks in the cheeks. Um, so I think that's the next step. Like for your um, skin painting, is is working out where where the color hue should go and incorporating them in because this is nice and smooth. I think you do with a bit more shadow value. Like you've got a very aggressive light on this model, which is putting putting this side into shadow. Um, so yeah, that that would be the next thing. That like the hue contrast and and the lighting contrast in the skin. Um, and then also good good version of red hair. I like the tones that you've used. You could probably just go deeper on the shadows and like where it separates from the skin as well. That that occlusion shadow needs to be much deeper. Um, but no, great start to the bust. It's looking really good. So uh, yeah, keep going. And I hope you find that helpful, mate. Um, right, over to you, Matt, for the outros. Yeah, great advice. I remember my wife used to watch loads of makeup tutorials and they'd always be like, yeah, just keep adding really thin layers on top to bring out your like cheekbones. I'm like, yeah, I'll always add thin layers. <laughs> <laughs> About 96 of them on a bus. <laughs> yep. Uh, if you stuck around to the end of the video, thanks very much for watching. And if you submitted anything uh, to the, uh, the for the month, thanks very much. We know it's not easy to put your work out there for other people to criticize. Or, but we hope we've given you some constructive feedback to work on with. And if you'd be interested in submitting your own piece in the future, just check us out on Facebook and we'd be more than happy to have you next time. All the best. Bye.